I did a project today where I uh, made a headstone for a dog of ours that has passed away and I needed a design that was 12 inches by 12 inches which I couldn't print on my home printer because it does you know eight and a half by 11 so uh, in that project I made a 12 by 12 design and so I just wanted to show you how to do that this is Inkscape uh, and you can download this off the internet. It's a open source program. So you'll need to uh, download that and install it. And then you're gonna come here where it says file and you're gonna go to document properties and then come over here and make this, uh, this the size you want. Now I like inches, so I'm gonna change these two to inches. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make this 12 inches 12 inches because that suits what I'm trying to do if you if you're doing something else then just change it to whatever size it is that you want okay and then we can close that dialog box and that gives us our uh, project which is 12 by 12 now the first thing we want to do is come over here and get make a box for this and so we're gonna come right here and we've got the, our little icon here the little pointer and we're gonna grab that corner and we're gonna left click and drag down to the bottom then we'll let go. All right, now if you do that and you get a solid uh, box, what you want to do is come over here to Object and then Fill and Stroke. And you're going to get this dialog box right here. Now, if you if it is solid, you'll probably have this box right here checked, and just check this X for no paint or no fill. And then you want to come over here to your uh, Stroke Paint and make sure that the first box is checked in that one. It could be that this one is checked for uh, no uh, stroke paint, but you want to make sure that you do have some uh, paint there. And then come to your stroke style, and this is just the width of the line that goes around uh, your box. Okay, so we can close that dialog box. And let's go over here and get a pointer. And then if we click out, you'll see we now have a nice box around our 12 by 12. Next, let's go over here and let's put some text in. So we're gonna grab the text over here and let's go up here and let's change this to, let's, oh, let's change that to, I wanna get Tahoma. Okay. And we're going to need something much bigger than that. So let's start with 144. And we'll click right here. And the dog's name was Muffin. Oops. <laughs> okay. And then we'll do another one. And this will be the date. 2000, 2005 to... 2018. Now that's going to be too big, so let's go up here right up in this area and let's change that to I think 100 is what we want. And we'll delete out the rest of that and hit enter. And it might be a little small actually, so let's do like 120. There we go, that's pretty good. And then let's go back here and click on our muffin there and let's make that more like 200. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's get these aligned. So go, let's go back up here and get us a pointer in the left-hand corner. And then we'll go to Object again. And we're going to go to the bottom where it says Align and Distribute. And that's going to give us over here a dialog box. And you'll notice right here it says Relative To. So whatever I click on, it's going to align it relative to whatever I select first. You can also change that and pick other things that you want it to align to. This is what I normally use. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click my box first and then hold down shift and click muffin. Now we are going to align that right here and that will align it in the center, just like that. And then I want to align it uh, in the center vertically also. So if I drop straight down, you'll see this one is center on a horizontal axis. So we're now going to center it there. Now we're going to come down here and click off of that. We're going to click the box again and then hold down shift and click our numbers. And we're going to center those like that. And then we're going to click off of them 
and then we're going to come back and click just on the numbers and then with the down arrow on our keyboard you hold that down and you'll see you can move those up and down without having to worry about them uh, getting out of alignment left to right okay so let's just put that right there now let's add a picture up in this area right here so we're going to go to file and we're going to go to import and this is a file I've been using and we're going to go to Paul all right now you can see here it says embed that's what we want and from file and we're not going to do any rendering or smoothing or anything like that so you just hit OK and you can see that's much too big now if I just grab this corner and I move it you can see it'll distort the image okay so I'm going to hit Control Z and fix that. If I hold down the Control button and grab this corner and move it, now it will change and keep the aspect ratio correct. Okay, so let's make it about that size. Let off on the Control button, and now we're going to just grab it and we're going to drag it up here. Okay, now I still think that's a little big, so I'm going to hit the Control button and I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. Okay, now. Let's align that. So we're going to click our box again. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to click our paw. And then we're going to come over to the line and we're going to align it left to right. Now I can take that and I can move it. I can highlight it and I can move it up if I want. I can come click these and move them down now that I've got something else in there. And then I think I'll click this and I'll move it down just a little bit. Okay, let's bring that down just a little bit. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if I was going to do this as a banner or something, I wouldn't want to do this step. But when you're trying to align stuff, this is really helpful. So come over here and pick this line tool. Okay, so we're going to come right over here. We're going to click that with the left click and leave it. And then we're going to come down and we're going to do a double left click like that. And then we're going to go back to we're going to go to this corner and we're going to click once and release and then we're going to go back to the bottom and we're going to double click all right just like that now that gives us a nice the lines right there that's going to help us get all this stuff lined up when we go to uh, glue it back together or tape it back together okay so we're going to now that we've got our lines in place we're going to come up here and we're going to save this image go up here and save it and we're going to save it as muffin 2 I've already done that so it's going to have to replace it okay so now we're going to come to print okay and you're we're going to use Foxit reader PDF printer and that's a program that you can get online it's just a PDF reader called Foxit reader and so you're going to download that it's free and install that and then we're going to hit print and you're going to see the uh, print muffin 2. That's the one we just did. Then it gave me an error because I've already done this. Okay, so now we're through with this program and we're going to go to Foxit Reader right there. So we're going to go to File. And we're going to, you can see I've already done it one time there. We're going to go to Computer. And we're going to open that file. Okay, so we're going to open Print Muffin 2. Okay, and here we are. You can see this is the one that we just printed. It's got our registration lines in there. All right, so now we just come up here to File, go to Print. All right, now look under print handling right here, make sure that tile large pages is highlighted. Page zoom should be to 100%. That's going to maintain your size. Now the overlap is 5 thousandths of an inch. We want that to be higher. Let's make that half an inch of overlap. And on cut marks, uh, be sure those are marked because if you look over here, these are the four pages that it's going to print. And so the cut marks are going to put little marks in the corners of the paper that show you where to cut it. So those are really helpful. And the labels, I leave those on because it's going to label each page in the corner and tell you where it goes. 
that may or may not be helpful depending on um, what you're doing. Um, now, for this one, I think it'll actually work better if we do it landscape. So I'm going to change that. And then um, you may come in and this auto center may be checked, which would be like that. Now you can see that's going to be really awkward to glue back together because it's right in the middle of all my words and all. So I, if I unclick that, you can see the paw and the muffin are really on one page by themselves. And my uh, numbers are on another page by themselves. So this is really going to be my best bet for alignment. And then I would just hit OK, and it's going to print these four pages. So if this was bigger, it would print you know part of the image on all four of these pages. Now, uh, you'll hit OK, and it'll print out the, the four pages. And then what you do with it from there, if you'll watch my video on doing the uh, tombstone for a pet, I'll show you how you take these pages and uh, tape them back together and use them as your template. Hope this was helpful to somebody. Thank you for watching.